Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna continue talking about R squared and the interpretation of it. We're gonna use the same example that I was using earlier. This example relates the CEO salaries with, with the return on equity and uh, our Y variable in this case is salary. And our usual assumption was that uh, rate on equity explains the salaries of uh, CEOs. So I'm gonna regress salaries on the return on equity and then I'm gonna run the summary command or summary function to get these results. We were interested in this R squared. So what this R squared is telling us is that the return on equity explains about 1.3% of the variation in salaries. So it seems like the return on equity, it is uh, explaining only a part of uh, the variation in uh, total salary. So it's not the whole story in this case. The next example is the example of uh, wages and uh, education. So we were interested in knowing how much of the variation in uh, the wages is explained by education level. We can look at R squared again and seems like R squared is about 16%. So which means about 16% of the variation in wages is explained by education level. Right, so this is how you interpret this measure. So here's another way of looking at this. If your data is fitting very well to the original data, that is your y variable, it is explained accurately by x variable, your r squared will be very, very close to one. On the other hand, if your x variable, it's not explaining much variation in your y variable, your r squared will be very close to zero. I also discussed some of the limitations of uh, using r squared in my previous video. So that's how you interpret uh, this R squared measure and that's how you get uh, R squared from R. The most important point was how to interpret this coefficient. All right.